first, let's take a look at the author, Chelsea Steiner, who is a never-ending source of lols for the Mary Sue, which it, it in itself is just, um, it's like a, a cringe, um, cringe upon cringe, an ejaculation of cringe. Chelsea Steiner, how many, how many picks did it take to get this shot? <laughs> these poses, these these people take, you know, like it's when guys pose. They hold the camera out in their arm. They put their tongue out or they smile and they take the picture and they usually get it done in the first shot. How many shots did this take? Uh, I guarantee it was not the first shot. Chelsea Steiner. Chelsea was born and raised in New Orleans, which explains her affinity for Cheesy Grits and Britney Spears. I've never had Cheesy Grits. She currently lives in L.A. with her husband, two poorly behaved rescue dogs. Former roller derby girl and black belt in judo, so she's not to be trifled with. She loves the word Jewess and wishes more people used it to describe her. Okay, she is a she is a Jewish, a, a racist, uh, sexist Jewess. Um, and then it's funny because the articles, the uh, the uh, comments, nobody's really in in support of the film, or very very few people are in support of the film because it's. Kind of the trailer was kind of lackluster. It's uh, Elizabeth Banks has big plans for her feminist Charlie's Angels reboot. We're finally getting a Charlie's Angels story from a female perspective. Why? Why would you think that would be a good thing? How is is that? Okay, look at your ROI, your return on investment. Is that going to help your return on investment? I don't know how much this movie costs. It's a big budget film, I, I assume, but it's a big big budget film. Uh, with women in it, so I assume they're toning that budget way, way down. You, well, normally, I would think a Charlie's Angels film filmed in modern day in 2020 would be like $200 million. Um, so I assume this is cut in half because uh, the money, the money man, <laughs> the um, the people who are funding this, the investors, they know that it's uh, women... Women girl power films haven't done that. They've underperformed. Uh, Captain Marvel was one of the exceptions, but the rule is that the female-powered films have kind of underperformed. This week saw the premiere of the first trailer for the latest reboot of Charlie's Angels. While our own Princess Weeks was less than impressed with the results, I find myself eagerly anticipating this movie. As a Charlie's Angels fan, to be honest, a fan of anything with female spies, how many movies have they made with female spies and haven't female spy movies typically been the woman play the honeypot role where they use their sexuality to gain information from um, foreign nations, foreign nationals. Uh, are you a fan of that, the, that trope? <laughs> because that's what they did. Somehow I don't think you are. I must admit that while the trailer was good, it wasn't. What really excites me about the film is writer, uh, co-star Elizabeth Banks. Banks has spent years in Hollywood as a singular talent that has been vastly underutilized. Okay, this is what I read I didn't understand. I don't remember Elizabeth Banks as being amazing. She she was in a couple of funny movies, and some she was okay. That one with Paul Rudd, um, where they're, they're selling energy drinks. She was like an okay ancillary character but she wasn't i mean she was the love interest but she wasn't amazing um <laughs> they do this big larper scene and then they the guy uh, sings a cover of beth by kiss at the end it was kind of a sweet film and anything paul rudd is in is generally it's not great but it's i don't know how to say it it's it's like you like Paul Rudd so much that you watch anything he's in, except for that one film, I Love You, Man, which is just, I can't watch that. It's hard to watch. Um, anyway, so I don't remember Elizabeth Banks as being amazing. And, and Zach and Mira may make an adult film. She was okay, but everyone in that film was good. The, uh, the, the There was like four main characters, and then there was um, another four, I guess, uh, secondary ancillary characters who were all really good. Everyone in that film was really strong. Um, even the adult film stars who's, who were in it. Uh, the trailer was good. Okay. Singular talent has been vastly underutilized. Why has she been vastly underutilized? If you're putting a butts in seats and selling tickets, you're going to be utilized because you're going to make, you're going to return the investor's investment. So to say someone is underutilized is kind of a 
flies in the face of reality, I think, a little bit. She spent years playing the, that girl in Judd Apatow comedies and variations of the girlfriend trope in other studio films when she's a gifted comedic actress in her own right. I'm not sure. I haven't just haven't seen her in, in anything where I would say, yeah, she's a gifted comedic actress. She's just She was a pretty girl who read her lines. Uh, in the past few years, Banks has made a name for herself as a savvy producer who oversaw the hugely successful Pitch Perfect franchise and Hulu's uh, Shrill. Banks directed Pitch Perfect 2. Okay, Pitch Perfect was very good. I think I saw two or three of them. They were funny. The cast was excellent, and the humor was not politically correct. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't off the off the hook, just crazy. But it was a. Uh, it was. It wasn't what you'd expected. It wasn't some feminist garbage. It was funny, and that the lead, the lead girl, um, the fat girl, I forget her name. It was really funny in it. But the whole cast was funny. Everything, everyone in that film was good. It was a surprise. Okay, look, check out the qualifiers. Banks directed Pitch Perfect two, which was first qualifier one of the highest grossing films uh, for a first time female director. So there's a bunch of qualifiers in there. It's one of the highest grossing films. So we're talking like top 10 in a very, very, very small market uh, number. of First time female directors. You, you're talking about, there's like, how many films are we talking about? Not many. She's continually championed female driven stories. So she seemed perfectly po poised to deliver the first Charlie's Angels film directed by a woman. The 2000 Charlie's Angels and its uh, 2003 sequel, Charlie's Angels Full Throttle, directed by McGee and written by a team of men, although Full Throttle featured uh, Marianne Wibbler as a co-writer. Banks not only wrote and directed Charlie's Angels, but appears as Bosley in the film. In a new interview with Collider, she discusses the film's message. Banks said, one of the statements this movie makes is that you should probably believe women. We have as much of validity in what we're feeling and how we want to go about living in the world, being in the world, and that was really important to me, that we felt like we had characters that were being taken seriously and given a chance to live their best life. That's just word salad. You should probably believe women. What a... If I if someone said hashtag believe men, believe all men, you would immediately push back on that and say, whoa, 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 whoa. Men lie, women lie, believe facts and evidence, believe due process, believe in the fifth, sixth, and fourteenth amendment. We believe in at least the concept of due process, even if you're not an American. We don't just believe men or believe women, that's nonsense. To believe to believe women would be to uh, um Assume the conclusion that women don't lie. If that was true, then yes, you could believe women. But um, women do lie. Men lie. Humans lie. <laughs> Banks also touched on the feminism in this film. Okay, touching on the feminism in your film is like you're just taking millions of dollars away from your film every time you mention feminism. Most people are not feminists. Most people have a negative feeling of feminism. I feel like this entire endeavor is about giving women the opportunity, including myself, to participate fully in a really big action franchise, like the last two movies that had name name big big name actors. We've done it. It's been something that's been in the DNA of Charlie's Angels from the beginning. Yeah, you had Cameron Diaz uh, and Lucy Liu and that the other chick who was um, in all the Adam Sandler films. Th those are three huge names. The, the women in in these films. Uh, you mostly never heard of. And while the Charlie's Angels films of the early 2000s reveled in a kind of pop cheeky feminism, there's still several moments where the angels are the subject of the male gaze. That male gaze bought them homes and vacation homes. Cameron Diaz is loving the male gaze. If it wasn't, if it wasn't for skinny, beautiful young women making these movies 20 years ago, these uh, Cameron Diaz and Lucy Liu wouldn't have homes in Malibu. Um, the women in these films, in this new film, are using their brains and their wits. We had a mantra, which was, we are going to fight smarter, not harder. That's how we approached most of the action sequences in the movie. The women in the film, for instance, had another mantra on set, which was, everyone gets to wear what they feel awesome and comfortable wearing, and what they want to strut around in in this movie. Um, I press F to doubt on that. Okay, what if they, <laughs> what if they want to wear sweatpants and a tank top? Is that, is that really... Wardrobe is going to be 100% on board with that? Um... Whatever makes you feel best coming to set. That was the attitude we had about how we shot the film. Uh, no. 
Banks also prioritized diversity in the film. Well, you didn't prioritize diversity because you didn't use transsexual women. Why didn't you use lesbian transsexual women of color? I find transsexual women are being vastly underrepresented in these films. And Charlie's Angels should have a 100% transsexual woman cast. Which she said she made to appeal to the female audience. Um, that's another, you just took $20 million away from your, your return on investment with that 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 line. It's important that women, the audience for this movie, sees, oh God, you are, it's like you're allergic to money, sees themselves in some part of this movie. I think that's really important, Banks said. I want the audience to feel a sense of ownership over the film, that they could be in this movie, that they could live in this world. It's a real message. To have a sense of ownership in the film, you need to be an investor. You need to buy stock in the company, the limited liability film company that um, funds the film. You have no ownership interest in a property where you buy a ticket to see it. Um, it's nonsense. It's just word salad. It's a movie that I want to entertain all audiences, but I did want to make something that felt important to women, and especially young girls. If you think Charlie's Angels is going to be important to young girls, you're out of your freaking mind. I mean, what else can I say? But I'm totally here for this movie. What do you think? Be a collider. Okay, here's the interesting thing about the uh, comments, only 20 comments on this, is uh, people weren't enthusiastic for this film, which is weird because it's the, it's the freaking Mary Sue. If anyone's going to be on board with this feminism rah-rah stuff, uh, you'd think it'd be the Mary Sue, but they're not. I know I'm not the target audience for this film, which thinking about it is a weird thing to say, but I didn't like the trailer. Thinking about it is a weird thing to say. I'm not the target audience. Yeah, if I'm making a movie or selling a product or selling a, a, God forbid, a comic book or something, my target audience is the people with money. Anyone with money. I don't care what color you are. I don't care what your political beliefs are. If you have money, you're my target audience. I want to sell you my movie. I want to sell you my book. I want to sell you my comic. To say the target audience is women is really, really weird. You're just cutting your audience you're cutting our dance more than in half. Because a lot of women are not are not on board with the feminism thing. Pretty much every Kristen Stewart movie was, uh, moment was amazing. It's great seeing her have so much fun. Did we see different trailers? Because I didn't think Kristen Stewart was amazing. Really, people should give Kristen Stewart lots of chances. Why? The whole Twilight thing is so 20, um, 2009. She's been in a lot of other great movies, albeit they're mostly indie or obscure. So they should get over it and watch her post-Twilight movies. Yeah. God, this this uh, Mary Sue site is just garbage, garbage tier. Princess Weeks uh, is interesting. <laughs> She's wearing leggings.